Hello, welcome back to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to be creating our motor blower assembly. So let's start a new assembly file. Click OK. We are going to bring in our first piece, which is going to be the lower housing. So I'm going to browse to wherever I saved it. Mine is on the desktop. I'll select the lower housing, click open. And I'll just click this check to drop it in. And when you do that, it is going to be fully defined. So that's what we want. And then next, let's bring in this piece. We'll just walk, uh, walk our way from in out. So let's bring in, I believe this is called, um, let me check. I can remember the name, the blower. So let's bring in the blower again. Insert, browse to your file location. I'll select the blower open and I'll just click once right now what I will do is I will add some constraint select mate you want to make this piece this circular piece to that circular piece to that circular face and if things are in the way you can move it out of the way so I'm going to drag this out of the way a little bit and I'm going to add another mate this time I'm going to come to advanced. I want the width mate. So what that would do is it would put this in the center of that. For the first two face, I want to select this two face. And for the second selection, I will select this face and that face. And what that does is it will put that part in the center of those two and click OK. Next, let's bring in the upper housing. So browse. Going to select the upper housing. Click open. Just going to drop it somewhere over there. Again, we want to, we can use this circular to meet. So select circular. Select this face. And this circular face. So we are adding a concentric mate and click OK. And the next thing we can add is we'll make this hole to that hole and select this hole and select that hole. Mate and click OK. So the next thing we need to do is we can bring in the, um, the shaft. So let's browse and select the shaft, bring it in, drop it like that. Select mate, select the face of that shaft and select this face and add a concentric mate and click OK. I'm going to bring that out. So um, the way this looks is maybe we're going to mate this face of that shaft to this inside face and click OK. So all you do is just select the face and you select the face. SolidWorks will automatically apply the right mate. Next thing, let's bring in the model. So in set, browse, select the model, open, drop it somewhere over there. Now we want to mate this circular face to this circular face. So select the face. It is going to add a concentric mate. Accept that and click OK. Again, mate. We want to select this face and that back face. And click OK. I'm just going to move this over here. The next thing we want to do is this is still spinning around. So the way we can look that is we can, the way we design it, our right plane is the same as our assembly right plane. So we'll select mate and we want to select the right plane on this part and our assembly right plane and add a coincident relation and click OK. The last part we need to bring in is the cover. 
and set, browse, select the cover, open, just going to drop it there. I'm going to select the circular face and this circular face is going to add a concentric, accept that. And now we can make this circle with that circle. Accept that. Then we can make this face with this face and accept that. And click OK. And that is this part. That is how you create the assembly. We have all of our parts in and everything is made properly. And we are pretty much done with the assembly. Next, we can create an exploded view for this assembly. To create an exploded view, select exploded view up here. And from here, all you do is just select the part you want to explode and drag it. So I always use this arrow. Once you select it and it's blue, just drag it where you want it. And I'll select this shaft again. I'll use the arrow, drag. I'll select this. Um, I, I might just leave that there. And I'll select this. Pull it up. Select that and pull it down. And that is how you create an exploded view. And all the steps for your exploded view are here. So every, every single piece we dragged and we moved is listed here. So if you need to edit any of this step, all you have to do is right click on it and click edit step and you can just drag it to wherever you want it. And for this, I can step two, I can right click edit step and drag it where I want it. So that is how you create an exploded view. Once you're done, click OK. And you should, you will come to this tab. So come to the configuration manager tab. And if you click on the drop down, you will see your exploded view there. So to collapse, I'll select that to collapse it. And to explode again, I'll select that to explode. That's how you create an exploded view. Collapse, and I'm going to collapse. So remember, it is under the configuration manager, and you'll select the default. Under it, you should see your exploded view over there. That is how you create an exploded view. So let's look at the instruction and see what we've covered so far. So I'm going to go back to your instruction. And we, we have done number one. So we drew each part separately. Yes, we've done that. Um, draw an assembly. Yes, we create an assembly. Just like the picture we saw, we just create an exploded view. Um, for the animation, create a blast animation of the video showing the blast lines. Um, I'm not sure what that means, but if you have an example, I'll send it to me and I'll show you how to create the animation. And let's move on to five. Step number five is telling you to uh, create a configuration for your part. So it's saying on figure three, dimension eight and 15 inch, we should create another configuration within that part that makes it 10 and 16. And for figure eight, which is the shaft, it wants us to change the 24 inch dimension to 30 inch. So I'll show you how to do that. So let me minimize this. And it is talking about figure three is talking about this part. So the housing, the upper housing, I'm going to right click on it and open it. Right. To create a new configuration. And just to let you know, it wants us to change this dimension. So if we come here, it wants us to create a new dimension, like create another configuration for this 15 dimension and for the eighth dimension, which is how wide this is. To create a new configuration, come back to this configuration manager. So in here, down here, just click, right click and click add configuration. And I'm just going to call this um, second configuration. I'm going to call it second configuration and cl click OK. Right, so 
now our second configuration is selected now we have two the first the fourth one we created and the second one make sure you are in the second one and come back to this feature right your feature manager tree click on this drop down again now right click to edit that sketch number two um, number two and i'm just going to move it here for the 15 select it double click it to select it i'm just going to try to select it so select it so you get this the options the properties bar over here and under the configuration under the dimension not this one the second one under here change this to 16 right and click configuration and in here you want to change it to just this configuration so you are seeing in the current configuration you are in you want to change that dimension to 16 and click ok and exit your sketch and for the feature the 8 they want us to change the 8 to 10 so again we'll do the same thing select the feature right click and edit and for that 8 you want to change it to this configuration so not all configuration just the current configuration you are in and click ok and that is how you change it just to make sure we did it right so we'll right click on this again then we'll select configuration configure feature and it is showing for second configuration it is showing 16 so we what we will do for the default one the default one that's the first one we create that should be that should be 15 so we'll change it in here 15 and click ok so you can see the default is 15 and the second is 16 and click apply and close and let's verify this too so if you right click again we create the configuration but sometimes you just have to verify to check so here the second configuration we want that to be 10 we want this to be 10 so we're just going to change that dimension to 10 and click ok so watch what happens when we go back to our configuration so if i select the default you can see it, it is 8 and 10 and if i select the second one i'm just going to select it it gets bigger so select this shrinks select that gets bigger that is how you change the configuration you will need to so i'm just going to save it and close this we'll need to do the same thing for the lower part so open this and create the configuration the same way we create the configuration for the other one so first we'll right click add configuration we'll call it second configuration and click ok now we'll come to the feature and this is the first one we want to right click and right click on that sketch edit sketch number two we'll select double click that 15 till you get your properties configuration in this configuration click ok and we want to change it to 16 All right, let's just make sure we have that 16 in this configuration and click OK we might have to verify it later but let's just do that and for the boss the extra boss will right click on that to edit that feature and in this configuration we want to change it to this configuration and the distance is going to be 10 and click OK so now we can click it configure feature just to verify so in the second configuration we have it at 10 in the default we have it at 8 good that's what we want let's verify the sketch too right click on the sketch 
select configure feature. In the second configuration, we have it at 16. And in the first one, we have it at 15, which is the original one. Good. So if we come back to our configure, if we select this, you can see it goes down and you select that, it goes back up. That is how you change your configuration. And I'm going to save and close. And we need to do the same thing for the shaft. So I'll right click on the shaft, open. Okay, and come here, add a new configuration. Just call the second configuration, close. Then while we are in the second configuration, come back here, edit that sketch, normal two, and this 24, it wants us to change it to 30. So double click it to you get your options. And just click it to you get your options. And under configuration, change it to this configuration. Click OK. And change the dimension to 30. And select OK over there. And exit out of your sketch. To verify that it worked, Right click on the sketch again and select configuration. You can see in the second configuration it is 30 and in the default it is 24. So you can change the dimensions here just anytime you need to change it. So when you get there by select right clicking on the sketch or the feature and select configure feature. And I'm going to save this and exit out of it and update it in the assembly. So now we fulfill requirement five. So it wants us to now create another assembly configuration of the second configuration we just created. So now and under the assembly, we'll right click down here, add the configuration, and we can call this second assembly configuration. Second assembly configuration and click OK. So now we are in our second assembly configuration. What we need to do is come to feature, come to the feature manager tree for the first, which is the lower housing. Right click on the lower housing and select configure components. And I'm just going to drag this out so you see. So now both configuration in the assembly are under default, but for the second configuration, we want to change that to the second configuration we created in this part. And apply and click close. It is going to break it. That's fine because we need to change this. And once you change this, everything should go back to normal. So we'll right click on the upper housing. And um, right here, we can right click on it and click configure components drag it out and in here we want to change it to the second configuration as well click apply and everything should fix itself and click ok and in for the shaft we'll do the same thing right click configure components and for the second assembly configuration we want to change that to second configuration and apply and click ok so now we have created a separate configuration in our assembly. And you can tell because if I go back to the default, it shrinks. Watch what happens. And I click on second, click on default, click on second. So that's what your instructor wants you to create on step three. On step seven, it wants you to add the weight by applying material. So you have to find the weight of each part by applying the material. So it is not just know that in SOLIDWORKS, um, there's a difference between applying an appearance and material. I believe to apply a material, I have a video on that and I'm going to, because this video is getting too long, I'm going to include the link on how to apply a material. And once you've applied your material to check your weight, all you have to do is come to the evaluate tab and click on uh, mass property and all the information 
about the weights and everything of your part will be right here. So that's how you check the weights. And I will include the video on how to apply a material um, in the video. And um, let's keep going through the list. I believe that's everything. And um, this is just a drawing. You have to create that on your own. And that Nana is the same thing. And 10, I will create a link to how to check the center of gravity for your part. And thank you. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And I will see you in the next lecture. Bye.